What? What? I, I think I'm honestly lost for words. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 21 games were shown, seen, announced, given release dates of during that direct that I'm actually really excited about or at least curious and interested in. And honestly, I'm only really leaving out like three or four games, like that one box boy at the start. I'll play it, but like, eh. Like that entire 35 minute direct was full of amazing games. Some of them releasing today. Final Fantasy IX, it's like, honestly, this Direct was like tailored to me. You know how sometimes you watch a direct and it's like that was cool But it wasn't really for me. It was like everything they did and I know that I've, I've written this on like the envelope That I gave Kim a Valentine's Day card on because I was quickly scribbling things down But Final Fantasy 9 is my favorite Final Fantasy out of all the Final Fantasies Let me say that one more time Final Fantasies number 9 is the one I'm most excited about because it's my favorite Final Fantasy and it drops today at some point like today like tonight on the eShop What? That's crazy. I, uh, let me just okay go ahead and say it a brand new Zelda kind of remake, but Zelda, really? Really? I have to calm myself down. Like, was this possibly the best Nintendo Direct we've ever seen? At least in my opinion, yeah, I, I honestly think this might be the best one. A at least, at the very least, it was a very good Nintendo Direct. And I think a lot of things go into it. Not just the fact that I get to play more Starlink, the fact that Dragon Quest Builders 2 literally looks like one of the best sequels to a game I have ever seen, and I can't wait to get addicted to it. Super Mario Maker 2. I, like, I'm just <laughs> and not only did we get games announced that we kind of expected that I'm really excited about There was one that was so left field Astral Chain made by Platinum Games Like as soon as I saw that I fell silent in my live stream because I, I was like looking at it like Have I seen this before and if I have why do I not remember it because this looks like a game I would love What is this amazing game? I've never heard of and then sure enough Astral Chain, a game they dropped during this direct made by Platinum Games, one of my favorite game developers that makes some of the best hack and slashes of all time. It was like announcement after announcement after announcement. I was just losing my mind. This was so great. And I know I'm all over the place and I want to kind of collect my thoughts and talk about all of this in a more structured way. But I want to say, I think a large reason why I'm so amped up right now and so excited about this direct is because I went in with zero expectation because I knew that there was was nothing on the horizon, right? Like, we know Pokemon is coming, Luigi's Mansion is coming, Animal Crossing is coming, we know it's all 2019, but we also pretty much know that's all gonna be late 2019. A Fire Emblem is a huge release, and they're aiming that for, like, middle of the year, and so far, with the Switch, we've seen big releases middle of the year, and then a couple of big releases late in the year. So I've definitely been expecting to see those games, Luigi's Mansion, Pokemon, and Animal Crossing, all of which were just announced very recently, like, within the last six months. So obviously these games aren't ready to be seen yet, they're not releasing until later in the year, and what do we have in the middle of the year? E3. Nintendo's not only going to want to save some of their heaviest punches for E3, but they're also not going to show these games until they're much closer to being ready, and it just lines up better to announce the games a few months or even six months before they come out, rather now, a whole year before they come out, and that's just taking E3 into consideration, let alone the fact we get directs all throughout the year. Like, it's been crazy how long we've had to wait for this direct, but Trust me, we'll see more directs, like plenty more directs before E3 even hits. And typically what Nintendo does, I am so excited right now. And typically what Nintendo does, at least lately if you haven't caught on, they usually pick one of their big releases and they make it the focus of each direct. Like this direct was a Fire Emblem direct with a bunch of other surprise and announcements and information packed around it. Most recently we had a Smash direct. There was a actual Smash direct, but there was one that had Smash as the feature and then there was other stuff around that. And I think the one before that was the Mario Tennis direct. And you get what I'm trying to say. So when I saw the Fire Emblem Direct, instantly that told me Fire Emblem is the focus. So seeing Fire Emblem Direct, knowing that a lot of these big, big, big games weren't coming until later in the year, really all I went in expecting was to see Fire Emblem. And anything else on top of that was a bonus. I was really hoping we'd see some new IPs, maybe another big announcement or two from Nintendo, some really cool ports, DLC for games that we really like, maybe a couple of surprise releases on the eShop, and I, we literally got all of that. Like, I haven't even talked about the very start of the Direct in Super Mario 
Maker 2. I am so amped up. Like, honestly, it, I feel like I have never, I haven't done drugs, but I imagine this is what cocaine feels like. <laughs> this one does not surprise me at all. I mean, it was kind of a shock to see it, obviously, with no warning, but I had a feeling that at some point we were going to see this game. Arguably, it's really the last big game release title, whatever, from the Wii U that we haven't seen on Switch yet in some form. And since Mario Maker was so catered to the Wii U, made with the Wii U pad in mind, it would have been a lot of work to modify it and make it work purely on the Switch, so it kind of made a lot more sense that if you were going to put that much work in, you may as well throw some extra stuff in there, extra features, and just make a sequel. <sighs> Let's just... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I feel so dodgy holding this empty Valentine's Day card, but hey, it works. Let's just power through this. Marvel Ultimate 3, we already knew that was coming. I'm actually more excited for this game now than I was before, and I'll say it again, the fact that it's a Switch exclusive is not only really cool, but I think it's really starting to spell the start of something special on Switch. And then we got some Box Boy. It reminded me of Snipper Clips for some reason. Big update to Smash version 3.0. Honestly, I was talking through that part and zoned out through a lot of it. I don't think there was any like big new information in that just the fact that they're continually updating and improving smash which i really love and joker is releasing in april we got a toad treasure tracker update which i really didn't expect and everything they they're adding to it i feel like they should have had it on launch and it would have made this game worth re-releasing again when it re-released it was bare bones essentially the game it already was but they're adding two player co-op which i think is a fantastic idea it already had two player co-op kind of except the second player just had a cursor and could shoot things at the screen it it really sucked. It was not fun and not engaging at all. And then they're adding some new levels to it as well. And again, I feel like this really should have been on launch, but at least they're doing it now. I didn't expect to see support for that game past release. Then Nintendo does what Nintendo does best, and they showed some love to those Nintendo indies. I mean, we already saw Box Boy, but we see even more with Bloodstained. I just love that Nintendo supports their indie games or their smaller games, their smaller companies, as much as they support their own stuff most of the time. Then we saw more Dragon Quest Builders 2, and if you're one of my awesome subscribers and you already watched my upcoming RPG video, you would have actually already been told all this information because I dived into websites and I found it all out for myself and I presented it in my own way, but now it's been officially presented by Nintendo with all the new features, the fact that you can play this game co-op either locally or online, which is really cool. If you played the first game, you will you will already know how cool it will be to have your friends in your game building and creating with you. Even a first person mode, like they have gone all out with this sequel. I, mean, I honestly believe it is one of the best sequels I have seen to a game ever. Then we got a whole bunch of Dragon Quest info. This There was so much info in this Dragon Quest part 2 that I didn't even know about in regards to the game. I have it on PlayStation 4. It's right behind here somewhere, sealed, because I picked it up on Black Friday, forgetting it was coming to Switch. And this is just one of those perfect fit games for the Switch. It's going to be kind of like a mishmash of Breath of the Wild and Xenoblade 2 with turn-based combat. It's just going to be a lot of fun. We even have Starlink DLC adding new story missions for the Star Fox crew. They even hinted towards races coming to the game. It seems like they're putting a ton of work into DLC for this, which I'm really surprised to see because as I'm sure a lot of you notice, especially if you're living in the USA, Starlink dropped in price immediately. Like it was $70, $80 for the Switch pack. And then within a month or two, it was 30 and in discount bins. I'm not sure what happened there because I was under the impression it actually sold really well on the Switch. I know that out of its total sales, since it was released on all the systems, PC, Xbox, PlayStation, Switch, like 90%-ish of the sales were all on Switch, like people really only wanted to play this on Switch and nowhere else. So I'm not surprised to see Nintendo only exclusive DLC for the game. I'd be interested to know if they're making DLC for anywhere else or if they figure it's not worth their time. Then we saw some more information on Yoshi, which is coming out pretty soon. Of course, we saw a ton of info on Fire Emblem. It was delivered in kind of a boring monotoned way, and I feel like a lot of you checked out during that part, at least in my live stream, but for me, I found that information very interesting. I haven't played that many Fire Emblem games at all. So while I am excited to dive back into that combat as I love that turn-based strategy so much, I'm kind of new to the Fire Emblem series and story. And the realization for me that you could pick a house was interesting. I mean, obviously the game is called Three Houses, but I didn't think about the fact that you'd be able to choose which house you're in. And I'm not sure if they mentioned it in the trailer, I should go and rewatch it, if it changes the story at all, depending on what house you're in. You imagine it would have to in some way. Then we got Battle Royale Tetris. And by the way, as soon as that came up on the screen with the 99 of the 99 players one remaining in the tetris block i called it as battle royale tetris and honestly 
I think it's a really cool idea. I mean, obviously it's hilarious that now even Tetris has a Battle Royale style mode. I mean, I mean, you can't hate this really, it's free. You either play it or you don't. I'm curious to see how good I am at Tetris compared to a hundred other people. Then we got a surprise, at least for me, surprise port on the Switch, Dead by Daylight. Damon X Machina got an update as well as a demo which you can go out and play and then even give your feedback on. And I highly recommend if you think this game looks good, try out that demo and leave some feedback because the developers seem really open to fixing things, changing things, and making the game better as to how we enjoy it. And that is just the perfect way to make a video game. Hellblade! Wow! This one took me super off guard. I only just finished that game. Like, I'm talking maybe two weeks ago. I thought I'd finally try it out. It's on Xbox Game Pass. And it was a mind-bending, fever dream-giving nightmare machine, which I can't believe people are gonna play on the Switch. Like, Recently there was talk, I'm not gonna go into who said it, <laughs> about Mortal Kombat 11 being too gory, graphic, too mature for the Switch, which by the way, no. But if there was a game that I would actually give you an argument on, <laughs> on whether or not, wow, this is, this is dark for the Switch, Hellblade has got to be up there. This has to be easily one of the darkest, scariest, goriest, freakiest games we've seen on the Switch. However, I will say, end of the day, an amazing game, a fantastic experience. I'm so glad I played it. Like, it's a work of art in itself. So if you have the stomach, try it on Switch. <laughs> Let's keep going, I'm out of breath. Unravel 2, I haven't had a chance to play Unravel 2 yet. It's just a game that looks like it belongs on the Switch. It's, it looks like a game that was made for Switch. Assassin's Creed 3. I heard rumors about this over the last couple days thanks to Spawn Wave. I thought it was a really weird choice. The last one I truly loved was Rogue. That and Assassin's Creed 4 were great games. Everything after that, just I, I just didn't care. And while Assassin's Creed 3 wasn't one of my favorites, I did like it. And I will play it again on Switch, mostly for nostalgia. And it feels weird saying that. I mean, it's been a while. I mean, I saw the visuals during that trailer. It, it, it doesn't look like it aged well. It looks like it aged like milk. Then we got the Final Fantasy 7 and 9 release dates. 9 obviously being tonight. Go and play it if you haven't before. It's my favorite one. I love it. Then we were shown Astral Chain for the first time. I already gushed over that at the start of this video. So how about we just breeze past it here. But yeah, I'm excited. That might be my second favorite announcement for the list. Just because of how off guard it caught me. And how much I just feel like I know I'm going to enjoy that game. I think it's going to be one of those Switch gems. Not a game you necessarily go out and buy the system for, but it's one that if you have the system, everyone else is like, oh, you haven't played that yet? You have to. And then I don't need this for the last one. Zelda. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Again, if you watched my video a few days ago about upcoming RPGs for the Switch, you'll know the last game I talked about on that list was a brand new Zelda game. I'm so glad I got that video out when I did because here we are. Of course, at some point last year, like I said in that upcoming games video, Nintendo put up listings for people to help them work on a Zelda game, essentially. So rumor mill went crazy. What Zelda game could it possibly be? It makes sense to take a Zelda game, which is one of the best Zelda games that's really old. A lot of people probably haven't played and give it its first remaster. I think first, because there was DX, but that was also on Game Boy, so. And here it is. I'm pretty sure I lost my mind. Is that? Can we not do this right now, please? Oh my God. Ah! Oh! What? Oh my God, why does it look like that? What is that? Who is that? It looks amazing. What? What? Why does he look like that? Why is there Goombas? What is happening? <laughs> when I saw that animated intro, I didn't know what to think. And then the graphics kicked in and I love the look of the game. Immediately, I loved, love, love, love the look of the game. I was very surprised by Goombas. I don't know what's going on there, but the one, I'm not gonna say gripe because I don't wanna be disappointed with anything in this video and I'm not disappointed with this, but Link looks really weird. I'm just gonna leave it at really weird. Link looks a certain way, right? Like no matter what incarnation Nintendo has ever given him, whatever art style they've gone for, they've always made it somehow look like Link. Like Wind Waker, those Zelda graphics were completely different to any graphics or visuals we've seen in Zelda at all up until that point, but still we took one look at Link in that game and we went, that's Link. Don't know how you did it, but that's Link in that art style. When I look at this, I don't say to myself, you did it, Nintendo. That's Link in this art style. It almost doesn't really even fit in with the rest of the art style. It just looks very 
weird. But the game is incredible. The visuals overall look amazing. And the way <laughs> one... <laughs> very important character looks isn't going to affect the gameplay or affect the game at all for me and I'm, I'm obviously going to get used to it. If I was the artist, not what I would have gone for, but I'll take it very happily because I am very excited to play this on my Switch. I, I, I'm, I, the Switch library is insane. So if I missed anything that you're really amped for, leave those down below and let's just get excited. Ah oh, man. <laughs> Have you ever seen me this hyped? I can't fake this. I can act sometimes. I can't fake this level of excitement. If you enjoyed this video, please share it with some friends. They need the recap too, and they need to see it delivered by someone who's actually excited about the direct. I don't want them seeing no negativity like this video. Hair flip all over that subscribe button. I think if I drank coffee right now, my heart would explode.